Nina Reeves on General Hospital has been through quite a lot of ups and downs, so it's understandable that some viewers might have a little trouble getting a handle on her character. So let us fill you in on the wild history that took her from baby snatcher to magazine editor. Nina was first introduced to GH in May 2014 and was played by Emmy-winning actress Michelle Stafford. However, when she opted to leave the soap, the role was recast with another Emmy winner, Cynthia Watrose, in June 2019. So while Nina may look a little different than she used to, the character isn't going anywhere. Nathan West wanted to make Silas Clay pay for putting his sister, Nina, into a coma, but it was later revealed that her mother, Madeline Reeves, had accidentally done it when she gave her an overdose of antidepressants to cause her to miscarry Silas' baby. Although Madeline then claimed her daughter had died, Nina showed up in poor Charles having awoken from her coma. She wanted things to go back to the way they were with Silas, but he admitted he was now dating Sam McCall. Nina pretended to be okay with it, but she secretly schemed to come between them, even pretending that she still needed her wheelchair when she didn't. Nina was on a roll with her multiple schemes. Todd were I shook slash ABC via Getty Images Although Nina did win Silas back, he split up with her when he learned about her lies. Desperate to have his baby, Nina decided to force Ava Jerome to go into labor and steal her newborn daughter. She and Franco Baldwin went on the run, but the authorities caught up with them and Silas convinced Nina to give Ava back her baby. She pled not guilty by reason of insanity and was committed to Shady Brook where she met Heather Weber. Franco managed to get himself committed as well to protect Nina from his mother, and the pair bonded before they were eventually released. Unable to access her trust fund, Nina went along with Franco's scheme to blackmail Olivia Falconeri into giving them free room and board at the Metro Port Hotel. When Ava's daughter was kidnapped again, Nina was hurt that Franco didn't believe her innocence and then married Rick Lansing to hurt him, but Rick had only married Nina to help Madeline get her hands on her money. She was also the prime suspect in Silas' murder when Franco found her holding the knife over his dead body. Turned out Madeline was the one who killed him, you can drop the knife. He's dead. Sean Smith slash Studios.com After freeing herself from Rick, Nina wanted to make a fresh start and convinced Julian Jerome to give her a job so he made her editor-in-chief of Crimson Magazine. She found herself drawn to Valentin Cassidine, and agreed to marry him to help his custody case for his daughter. Charlotte. It didn't hurt that Nina would finally get a child, something she'd always wanted. Unfortunately, his continued involvement with Anna Devane caused Nina to grow jealous, and after she learned he'd known Peter August was really Henrik Fison, she dumped him, blaming him for being partly responsible for Caesar Fison killing her brother, Nathan. Nina also helped Lisa Lobrick kidnap Peter for causing Nathan's death. But when the doc wanted to kill him for revenge, Nina backed off and actually helped him get free. After learning of her mother's death, Nina received a package containing a locket from her childhood and realized that the other half of the heart was with the daughter she had been told died while she was in the coma. Unbeknownst to Nina, Valentine was so desperate to win back her love that he got Madeline to reveal that the infant had survived and then schemed to have a young woman named Sasha Gilmore pose as her long-lost child. Valentine would stop at nothing to win back the woman he loves. Chris-JPStudios.com Nina was wary, but eventually overjoyed to be reunited with her daughter, and that helped her finally give in to her feelings for Valentine leading to their inevitable reunion. When Jasper Jax Jax bought his way into Aurora Media, Nina became determined to show him that she could make Crimson more successful than ever before, and the sparks between them pitted a jealous Valentine against his presumed rival. Unfortunately, it was Valentine's scheme with Sasha that proved the couple's undoing as Lulu overheard Sasha and Obert discussing the lie and revealed the truth at the wedding. Crushed by Sasha's lie and assuming Valentine was a part of it, Nina ran out of the church in tears and Jax took her his new home to offer her a shoulder to cry on. Keeping Sasha at arm's length, Nina forgave Valentine and began planning to marry him again but it turned out she was onto him and planned to destroy him at the altar. She even urged Ava to join forces with her so they could take down the Cassidy men who had wronged them both. 
and as they were about to exchange vows on New Year's Eve. Nicolas crashed the ceremony with Ava, who Valentine had just tried to murder. Everyone was stunned to see Nick alive, and Valentine realized that Nina had set him up for a fall. Nina didn't mind working late so much anymore. Howard Wise slash Studios.com having finally cut ties with Valentine for good, Nina found herself growing closer to Jax. After a passionate kiss, she worried because he was technically her boss, but after he spoke to human resources and got the okay, they were finally able to enter into a real relationship. Nina lost Maxie when Jax wouldn't approve her raise, and ended up hiring Nell Benson to keep an eye on her actually testifying against her employee when she sought custody of her son, Wiley. Nina also decided to search for her long-lost daughter again and Jax was able to find a jeweler who tied the hard pendant to nurse Phyllis Caulfield. Nina remembered her nurse and Phyllis revealed she'd given half of the necklace to the baby when she delivered her to new parents in Florida, despite Carly's attempt to stifle the truth. Due to her involvement in Nell's death, Nina eventually learned that the necklace little Avery had found belonged to Nell. Heartbroken to realize that her long-lost daughter was now truly lost, Nina was also furious at Jax for helping Carly keep the secret for so long. The broken heart pendant led to a real broken heart for Nina. ABC Nina was crushed to realize she'd never have a chance to know her daughter and try to connect with her grandson, Wiley, but Carly interfered there, too. Frustrated, Nina left Port Charles and stopped by the Tano to visit Phyllis where she was stunned to discover that the familiar voice she'd heard on the phone when she'd called before belonged to a very much still alive Sonny Corinthus. She quickly called Carly, but any intention of letting her know her husband was still alive went out the window when Carly was immediately bitchy towards her. Stunned that Sonny had amnesia, Nina got to know Mike and found herself enjoying his company and the time away from the drama in Port Charles. Still, Nixon Falls had its share of excitement, with Nina and Mike growing closer as they teamed up to take down corrupt developer Elijah. When Jax paid a visit, he spotted Sonny, but it was after being shot by a robber, so Nina was able to convince him it was a mistake. Later, Jax told her she could see Wiley, and Nina returned to Port Charles for a visit, promising Mike she'd come back soon and sealing the deal with a kiss. Nina built a house of cards in Nixon Falls that couldn't last. ABC After returning to Nixon Falls, Nina was heartbroken when Lenny Caulfield died, and continued to feel guilty about keeping Sonny from the truth. But things got even more complicated when Peter showed up at the Tano and threatened to blow up her house of cards if she didn't help him get his daughter back from Maxie. Then Jax showed up, too, realizing Sonny was alive and urging Nina to tell him who he really is. But the decision was taken out of her hands when Peter set the Tano on fire with Phyllis and Nina trapped inside. Mike rescued them but while trapped in the raging inferno, his memories returned and when Sonny emerged from the smoke, he was furious at Nina for keeping the truth from him for so long. Nina tried to get him to understand that they had fallen in love with each other, but he insisted Mike wasn't real and returned to Port Charles to reclaim his life. Nina followed behind, and explained to Maxie what had happened. She also visited with Wiley and was then confronted by Carly, who had just learned from Maxie how Nina had lied to Sonny for months about his identity. Nina struggled to explain and apologize but Carly vowed to destroy her for what she'd done to her family. Sonny asked Carly to just let it go but Michael had Nina arrested on charges and she went before a judge in Pennsylvania to see if she should stand trial. However, during the hearing, Scott managed to get Willow to admit she'd overheard Sonny and Nina discussing the relationship they had in Nixon Falls and then pressed Sonny to admit he didn't feel like a victim. The judge threw the charges out, but Nina was upset that her relationship with Mike had been exposed and Carly remained furious with her. Stay tuned to see how Nina's storyline continues. Love GH? Be sure to join our We Love General Hospital Facebook group to chat about all the latest storylines and juicy gossip. Ad luck test. <laughs>